Lupin, Lisa. Whisper, whisper, whisper. Harry Potter, whisper, whisper. Slytherin, whisper, whisper. No, seriously, what the hell? Whisper, whisper. Ravenclaw. Being at the center of an extraordinary and curious event, and then being sorted into House Ravenclaw, was rather closely akin to being dipped in barbecue sauce and flung into a pit of starving kittens. I promised the sorting hat not to talk about it, whispered Harry for the upteenth time. Silence! No more talking until the sorting ceremony finishes! There was a brief dip in the volume as everyone waited to see if she was going to make any specific and credible threats, and then the whisper started up again. Dumbledore stood up, smiling genially. Instant silence. Dumbledore sat down again. Note to self, do not mess with Dumbledore. Harry was still trying to process everything that had happened during the incident with the sorting hat, not the least of which was what had happened the instant Harry had lifted the hat off his head. In that moment, he'd heard a tiny whisper as though from nowhere, something that sounded oddly like English and a hiss at the same time. Something that had said, Salutations from Slytherin to Slytherin. If you would seek my secrets, speak to my snake. Harry was sort of guessing that wasn't supposed to be part of the official sorting process. Gryffindor! Ron Weasley got a lot of applause, and not just from the Gryffindors. Apparently, the Weasley family was widely liked around here. Harry applauded Zabini too, ignoring the odd looks he was getting from everyone, including Zabini. No other name was called out after that, and Harry realized that Zabini, Blaze, did sound close to the end of the alphabet. Great, so now he'd only applauded Zabini. Ah, oh, well... Dumbledore got up again and began heading towards the podium. Apparently, they were about to be treated to a speech. And Harry was struck by the inspiration for a brilliant experimental test. Welcome! Welcome to a new year at Hogwarts! Hermione had said that Dumbledore was the most powerful wizard alive, right? For the committee to work, it would have to make Dumbledore say something so ridiculous during a speech that even in Harry's state of mental preparedness, he would still choke. Before we begin our banquet, I would like to say a few words. And here they are. Happy, happy boom boom, swamp, swamp, swamp. Thank you. Harry sat frozen as soda tickled out of the corners of his mouth. He had, at least, managed to choke quietly. If anyone in the world could resist the power of the Comet T, it would be Dumbledore. The Comet T was omnipotent. As soon as he learned a spell to temporarily alter his own sense of humor, he could make anything happen by making it so that he would only find that one thing surprising enough to do a spit take. Well, that was a short little journey to godhood. Even I expected this to take longer than my first day of school. In retrospect, he probably should have remembered his mental note not to mess with Dumbledore. Or maybe if he'd had one single scrap of common sense. It was hopeless. He was corrupt to the core. Hail the Dark Lord Harry. You couldn't fight fate. Eat. Others were starting to serve themselves food which had magically appeared at the table. Whatever. Excuse me. Um, was that a normal speech for the headmaster? You all didn't seem very surprised. Oh, Dumbledore's insane, of course. Lots of fun, incredibly powerful wizard, but completely bonkers. I hear that Dumbledore is secretly a genius mastermind controlling lots of stuff, and he uses the insanity as a cover so no one will suspect him. I've heard that too. And there were furtive nods from around the table. I see. So everyone knows that Dumbledore is secretly a mastermind. Most of the students nodded. Brilliant. If everyone knows, no one will suspect it's a secret. Exactly. Wait. That doesn't sound quite right. Note to self, the 75th percentile of Hogwarts students, aka Ravenclaw House, is not the world's most exclusive program for gifted children. Harry was finding himself really, really hoping that his clever new idea didn't actually work, and that the comet he worked some other way and didn't actually have the omnipotent power to alter reality. It wasn't that he didn't want to be omnipotent, it was that he just couldn't bear the thought of living in a universe that really worked like that. There was something undignified about ascending through the clever use of soda pop. Harry gave up and started eating his blue sausage. It was quite good, especially the glowing bits. Dinner passed with surprising rapidity. Harry tried to sample at least a little of all the weird new foods he saw. His curiosity couldn't stand the thought of not knowing how something tasted. 
Thank goodness this wasn't a restaurant where you had to order only one thing and you never found out what all the other things on the menu tasted like. Harry hated that. It was like a torture chamber for anyone with a spark of curiosity. Find out about only one of the mysteries on this list! Ha ha ha! There was no time like today to turn back from the dark side. Screw destiny and screw the universe. He'd show that hat. Harry's thoughts flashed back to possibly the worst moment of his life to date, those long seconds of blood-freezing horror beneath the hat, when he thought he'd already failed. He'd wished then to fall back just a few minutes in time and change something, anything, before it was too late. And then it had turned out not to be too late after all. Wish granted. It had been an awfully cruel prank the hat had played on him, but you couldn't argue with the results on consequentialist grounds. This whole business with seeking Slytherin secrets seemed an awful lot like the sort of thing where, years later, you would look back and say, and that was where it all started going wrong. And he would wish desperately for the ability to fall back through time and make a different choice. Wish granted. He was going to stop walking down the path that led to Dark Lord Harry, a prospect which was sounding scarier by the minute, and yet also somehow increasingly attractive. Part of his mind was already visualizing the minion's uniforms. Dumbledore once again stood up from his seat. Harry couldn't help but feel the urge to drink another Comed tea. You've got to be kidding! Ahem! Just a few more words now that we are all fed and watered. I have a few start-of-term notices to give you. First years should note that the forest on the grounds is forbidden to all pupils. That is why it is called the Forbidden Forest. If it were permitted, it would be called the Permitted Forest. I have also been asked by Mr. Filch, the caretaker, to remind you all that no magic should be used between classes in the corridors. Alas, we all know that what should be and what is are two different things. Thank you for keeping this in mind. Quidditch trials will be held on the second week of the term. Anyone interested in playing for their house team should contact Madame Hooch. Anyone interested in reformulating the entire game of Quidditch should contact Harry Potter. Harry inhaled his own saliva and went into a coughing fit just as all eyes turned toward him. How the hell? Additionally, I must tell you that this year, the third floor corridor on the right-hand side is out of bounds to everyone who does not wish to die a very painful death. It is guarded by an elaborate series of dangerous and potentially lethal traps, and you cannot possibly get past all of them, especially if you are only in your first year. And finally... I extend my greatest thanks to Quirinus Quirrell for heroically agreeing to undertake the position of Defense Against the Dark Arts Professorship at Hogwarts. I hope all students will extend Professor Quirrell that utmost courtesy and tolerance which is due his extraordinary service to you and to this school, and that you will not pester us with any niggling complaints about him unless you want to try doing his job. I now yield the floor over to our new faculty member, Professor Quirrell, who would like to say a few words. The young, thin, nervous man who Harry had first met in the Leaky Cauldron slowly made his way up to the podium, glancing fearfully around in all directions. Harry caught a glimpse of the back of his head, and it looked like Professor Quirrell might already be going bald despite his seeming youth. Salutations, my young apprentices. We all know that Hogwarts tends to suffer a certain misfortune in its selections for this position, and no doubt many of you are already wondering what doom shall befall me this year. I assure you, that doom is not to be my incompetence. Believe it or not, I have long wished to someday try my hand as the Professor of Defense Against the Dark Arts here at the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The first to teach this class was Salazar Slytherin himself, and as late as the 14th century, it was traditional for the greatest fighting wizards of every persuasion to try their hands at teaching here. Past professors of defense have included not just the legendary wandering hero Harold Shea, but also the quote, undying, unquote, Baba Yaga. Yes, I see some of you are still shuddering at the sound of her name, even though she's been dead for 600 years. That must have been an interesting time to attend Hogwarts, don't you think? 
You are accustomed to the defense position being filled by incompetence, scoundrels, and the unlucky. To anyone with a sense of history, it bears another reputation entirely. Not everyone who teaches here has been the best, but the best have all taught at Hogwarts. In such august company, and after so much time anticipating this day, I would be ashamed to set for myself any standard lower than perfection. And so, I do intend that every one of you will always remember this year as the best defense class you have ever had. We have a great deal of lost ground to make up, and not much time to cover it. Therefore, I intend to depart from Hogwarts teaching conventions in a number of respects, as well as introducing some optional after-school activities. If that is not sufficient, perhaps I can find new ways to motivate you. You are my long-awaited students, and you will do your very best in my long-awaited defense class. I would add some sort of dreadful threat, like, otherwise you will suffer horribly. But that would be so cliché, don't you think? I pride myself on being more imaginative than that. Thank you. Then, the vigor and confidence seemed to drain away from Professor Quirrell, and he turned with a convulsive jerk and shuffled back to his seat. He seems a little odd. Meh, you ain't seen nothing. Dumbledore resumed the podium. And now, before we go to bed, let us sing the school song. Everyone pick their favorite tune and favorite words, and off we go! Hogwarts, Hogwarts, Hoggy Wotty Hogwarts.